Bop a hip hop e walk. Catch me busting sea walks across some treetops, bumping that deep rock. I reminisce, I reminisce, man. What the hell is this, man? I miss bumping this stuff in my system. I put my fist up while I listen. I throw up a message in it. Absorbing the message in it, no gimmick. So it's lasting more than a minute when I finish. I feel it in my digits. I grab my pen and paper and a pad and I hit it. I swear I'm the sickest. Try and diss this, get dismissed quick out of existence off my hit list. I switch it. Body slamming back through the earth that you came through. Reverse, first, you sectioned every name. But I can't really blame you. The government banks and media seems to hate you. And they make schools. And you pay dues. And you have kids. And they need shoes. And you bleed to get the ones with the threes and twos. Vehicles to fly them through the market just to watch the market melt down. When you're growing up in that west side, six side, west side. Alberta spit it like this. I'm just trying to bring it back to that flyness. I guess call me your highness and minus five six eyelids ice why it's nicest when I spit. I've been raised in an environment of harsh enlightenment where the highlight is through trials of fire. You learn to fight the titans and wow. signing our name is Zeus. Bright and lightens, fighting titans and take sight from my light. Third eye sight, the birds eye flight. The punches pile in the office filing though I'm Often smile and love doing the job, job provided. Out of kindness, kinda. I'm not trying to climb the higher states of mind. I'm just trying to change the climate, redesign it. Don't be blinded by everything that's shining gold and diamonds. Iridescent black slimes shining iridescent violets. Uh, black gold retirement for pig rig or rig piggies to settle down. They thought they'd leave their mark. Instead, they watched the market melt down. Living in that. Westside, side, side, side. See, with all the hooping and the hollering, thinking that you're a baller man, don't know about Marley, 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 even Parliament. So you're faking the funk, stacking the bread in the bakery truck. You ain't kicking it up, you're just making it up. Mission you participated enough, but you precipitated your crumbs, laid at the cr clubs, precipitating all laid at the clubs, class and bars. Rain on your parade, rain, go away, please come back another day, or rain something down on this brother's supper plate, cause these little piggies had roast beefs, but we was the ones who had none. So now we be beefing the piggies and stomping the rats who be keeping the bugs. It's Animal Farm, Orwell, Barnard, Mother Goose style, Warfare, Mother Goose style. Resistance is futile unless y'all be busting a new style, but nobody wants to do that. Because there's a lot more money in these Mother Goose raps. Pigs with big wigs trying to blow my house down. They brought the market to me, forced me to watch the market belt down. When you living in that Treaty Six. Thank you guys. I'm gonna read this poem that I wrote a long time ago, just because I'm, I'm filling up time. So somebody do that breathe thing for me. <laughs> Three, two, one, breathe! It helped, it seemed to help last time when I stopped stuttering, so, you know, feeling the vibes. Um, this one doesn't have a title yet, because I don't know how to name it. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, okay. There was just a child. <laughs> oh wait, that's the owner's son. I was like, where's this child's mother? Like, why is he just running around outside? Never mind. It's only like 8.30, despite the lack of sleep. To be fair, I grew up with brown parents. And when they tell you come in inside at like 6 o'clock, you go inside. So I don't have a good perception of time. Anyway, now that this is all talked about, I'm going to read the poem without like running children running behind me. Okay, that makes sense. So I don't know how to name this one. I'm thinking about just calling it Marshmallow and you'll probably see why. My mother tells me I am better off alone, that I am a marshmallow too soft for this world. And maybe she's right because I can't even see someone miss a bus without feeling sad. The thing about marshmallows is they have puncture wounds and birds that didn't go away when the world ate them whole. Birds left by careli the careless gave us the inability to care. Broke everything we are, marshmallows who just wanted to give everyone a little taste of sugar. Left at the bottom of fire pits, our guts smeared on sticks, 
stuck there, forgotten, like God, you didn't remember stepping in, dragging it along every step you took. I am a marshmallow, too soft to keep going. My guts stuck to you, left to be forgotten. This world will eat me alive and spit me out without warning. Told negativity is bad, but negativity is bad and I should just be positive. Leaving my bed day after day makes me sick, gives me the shakes. Withdrawals can be so bad and going without the safety of my covers. Maybe that's why sobriety never came so easy to me. It all spills out of these puncture wounds I have attempted to sew shit closed, stitching myself shut because the world broke me. The thing about marshmallows is when you burn them, you burn who they could have been. When they didn't get golden brown like you hoped, you toss them into the ash, forget about them, and grab a new one. You try to start from even in a pile of ash, we remember what we could have been instead of what we are. Thank you. I want to welcome our next poet all the way up to the stage. Keep the energy going, guys. Like you said, it's only 8.30. Can I get a big round of applause for you, so a few of you know this. It's called Dreamland Getaway. A dreamland I would call home and never truly live in, where I could leave the horror movie life behind, the unwanted screams for help that makes my ears pop and bleed out gooey blood. It's a place I would never have to care for others' trash worries. My mind would wander off through the atmosphere into the airless space. I would go higher and higher past bars that's as red as my bedroom walls with just hints of orange and banana colors, making everything picture perfect. I wish to never come tumbling down back to this world that makes me feel like an alien. It's an alien world to me never really truly fitting in with the humanity or what we would call ignorant humans. Though, I would have to say life is amusing. Like watching two king lions fighting to rule the unpopulated kingdoms, how heaven's angels die to become the most insignificant devils. I guess my getaway only becomes a dreamland if life becomes a hungry monster. Waiting, just to eat me waiting just to eat me like a fox with its little paws tearing the undead fish part by part, taking its time, letting the fish's heart beat slowly like the clock on my wall. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Over and over again till it fades to the last take. My eyes shut close as if the fish would come back to life. No. What's dead once would be dead till the big clock breaks like a glass in a stormy rain of fire crackling and melting till nothing was left but a glowing river. They all flow like the, mother, the beautiful Mother Nature's hair with all golden with sapphire red stones melted in. Thank you. Sorry, it's on Instagram. You know how cool I felt today? I got to like walk up to the owner and be like, can I have the Wi-Fi? Like thinking I'm all like important and shit because I'm hosting. And she was just like, oh yeah, like it's not a big deal if you have some password and like walked away. And I was like, alright, I'm still a big shot in my head, but it was just like so undignified. Because I was just so excited about being like the shit. Anyway, there's my embarrassing story for the night. I'm going to welcome Michael back to the stage.
was that um, earlier piece about God, and all I could think of while listening to it was, I met God, I was drunk in a phone booth, and her name was Mothman, and she had no words, only tears. Uh, that's, this is a phone call getting better. I think it's something that's supposed to get easier, but doesn't. Climbing a mountain is hard, and it's harder when every here and there you fall off. Go right back to rock bottom, right back to where you decided to start climbing, and think, I don't want to fall off again. It's easy to live in apathy of a peak when all it does is hurt you. I sit at the bottom now with new scars, new wounds to casually, consistently reopen. I lick them casually, consistently at the bottom of the rock. The massive, terrible rock that I must overcome. It's a bit like an elastic, or learning how to shoot one. As a kid, I'd always think I had it. You fire one elastic across the class, and you are on top of the world. I try to show my dad how I can do it now, and it snaps, leaving me with a swollen thumb. Sometimes you move backwards. Sometimes the elastic shoots back at you. I'm not injured, but I'm invalidated. I'm running out of elastics, running out of trial runs, running out of time. My shooting ability is based on the condition of my thumb. Every time I fail, it gets worse. Likewise, falling down a mountain makes it harder to climb on. I tell myself how this is necessary. The broken bones are required. My swollen thumb is a stinging necessity. Consuming, continuing my efforts is the only way to improve, and I think that's Terrible. I am locked in a cycle of self-harm in the sense that every few steps forward I trip, I face points, and that makes it harder to keep walking. There's no better medicine than a smile. The kind that slips onto my face as I think of reaching that peak, of taking that step, of shooting that elastic right into the center of the whiteboard. It's a blank canvas that I won't make a mark on. The significance will just be for me. I think the best part of the peak is the view. And looking down and thinking, I'm so glad I tried. I'm so glad I kept going. I'm so happy I'm alive. Thank you. I also forget how tall I am, so I can never like put the microphone in the right spot.
a second. This is going to freestyle for a bit, so sorry about this, but um, feelings, emotions, it's just all these like, oh no, he did it again. <laughs> he did it again, oh. He both is like in trouble. He both is that big trouble. The trouble he put in there today, your mama didn't know. Your mama said, the boy will go over there, right? He be right over there. Your mom said, be careful when you go over there. The boy will go over there. What happened? He got, he, he fell down the stairs, right? That's not, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> why would you go over there? Because mama said, I shouldn't go over there. But why would you go over there? Because mama said not to go over there. Well, mama said not to go there, you go over there. Okay? When mama said go over there, you stay there. You stay where you are. You don't go over, mama said, oh, don't go there. Okay? So you stay. So one thing my mom said, don't, don't go to Calgary. You won't learn nothing. You will not learn nothing. I went to Calgary. I came back, I said, mama, mama, hey, I brought you perfume. Beyonce perfume. She said, she, she, she didn't believe it, right? She didn't believe it. I said, mama, I brought you Beyonce perfume. And mama said, where'd you get a perfume from? I said, mama, I got it from work. She said, what work? I told her, mama, I was doing construction. She said, what construction? She said, I told her, mama, you won't believe it. But they're building big business. Big, 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 big business over there, mama. I told her, mama, we're going to Calgary. We're going to Calgary. We're going to Calgary, mama. Are you daring enough to witness the monstrosity that lies within? 
In deceitfulness I have birthed out of grief, these sugar skull secrets won't let me rest in solitude, and even with your sweet tooth, I'm afraid it won't be strong enough to chew on this. Can I trust you? A man? Given the past burdens of other men? Oh man, oh man, do you know the walls you've created for the other man? Moons passed in the presence of your stillness. The lies fought to stay in my mouth while I tenaciously burned the ashes. I burned, I stripped myself down to my bones. I forgave men before you played. I tickled your hand as you held my pumpkin organ. Let you climb on the monkey bars of my ribs. Let you spiral on my throat to find the fire. My pulsing lungs fought for us, learning to love myself enough to attract self. I looked into your pupil. This closed the remainder of my lies and felt them punch you. Saw the way my fear struck you. I felt your ribs and bird regardless you took a step towards me. I didn't feel too beautiful. But placed my tears on your palms, giving you my memories for the first time, giving you the choice of loving me unconditionally. I made no promises of not hurting you, but bravely committed to loving myself as deeply as I love you. The wind passed by, we stood there naked, did not exchange a single syllable. Fluent in silence, we made love. It's the most truthful we have ever been. of superseded, sub-feasible, unfeasible steeplechases upon the beckoning dawn of pure fawns debaunting them silver platter air-filled heads, welcoming the house of slaughter. Cause you got all too caught up with babies, not ladies, making babies and reiterating hate for boy soldiers with the weight of the world on their shoulders, larger than mountainous boulders, but I shake it cold like a supernova, super grovos, interior takeover, making cliffs of Dover, almost jumping them sober, destroying the delicacy of a brain so tender, not even considered being close to a contender, killed by their own drug abuse, fused, blued of light and rude, ride protruding, impending, egomaniacal, tactical, twisted, victimized stews of poor stupid use.
the big picture. I appreciate the big picture. I appreciate the little things that weren't done and the little things that were done and the big, big picture. The big, big picture. I appreciate it because I was the one who painted it. It is titled Portrait of a Revolutionary Couple. A grand canvas depicting a woman waving a massive pomegranate flag side by side with a man who is blowing his own trumpet. The two of them side by side leading a cavalcade of dis disenfranchised and unlikely lovers, a coup d'etat to overthrow the corrupt parliament of civil unions to oust the dictatorship of marriage to banish the clerics and high priests, etc., etc. But you, you, have dropped our flag in the dirt like an illiterate littering a pamphlet that he doesn't understand because he can't read, crumpling and tossing it in the gutter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. In the painting, your eyes are blue, like polished steel reflecting the sunrise. I know your eyes aren't blue but it makes for a better picture. I can change the painting if you want. If it will make you stay, I can change the color of your eyes. We can change the color of the flag. We can change the setting. If you will sit one more time for the portrait, just don't walk away, just sit. If you keep walking away, then, then you will fade. You will become less important. You will become a dot on the horizon, a dot, 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 an ellipsis on the horizon, a vanishing point. You are too beautiful to become a vanishing point, a fade away, a fading beauty. I will paint the man in the painting again. This time he will not hold the trumpet. Let us say that he will hold the lamp. And this lamp that I am holding, let's say that it is not a lamp. It is a, a figure, a figment. It represents something other than a lamp. And also, it will not be a lamp, it will be a painting of a lamp. But that does not make it less real. The idea of a lamp can light brighter than a real lamp. No, I am wrong. It cannot. Picture of a lamp is not a lamp. No. A picture of a lamp is not a lamp. Okay. I'm going to cut it there for poets tonight, but we did get like some kind of bad news about.